Hello, and welcome to my QTP video tutorial where I will be showing you various ways to update objects in the object repository. In this video, we'll be covering the following three topics. First, what does it mean to update an object in the object repository? Second, why would you need to update an object in the object repository? And third, what are some of the most common ways to update the object repository? As a reminder, to stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button. This moves us to the first topic which asks the question, what does it mean to update an object in the object repository? To update an object in the object repository means to change the way that QTP recognizes an object. For example, assume that while at the grocery store earlier today, you saw someone that you had not seen in a long time. When you first saw them, it took you a few seconds to recognize them because now they wear glasses where they had not before. What would have occurred when you recognized that it was your friend is that you would have to update your memory of your friend's appearance so that the next time you see them, you will recognize them more easily because you would expect them to be wearing glasses. This moves us to the second topic which asks the question, why would you need to update an object in the object repository? You might need to update an object's property values from time to time because the value for a particular property might have been changed to a different value. For example, assume you had stored a browser object in the object repository with a title value of test site. Then, a few months later, someone decides to change the title of the browser to testing site. QTP would no longer be able to find the object because it will be looking for a browser with a title of test site instead of testing site. If you make an update to the object repository item to have the new title value, QTP will again be able to recognize the browser object. This now moves us to the third topic which asks the question, what are some of the most common ways to update the object repository? There are several different ways to update the properties and their associated values that are used by QTP to identify an object. I will show you nine of the most commonly used ways. Now the first couple of ways that I'll show you will be by using the update from application functionality. The next few examples that I'll show you will be by using the test object details section of the object repository window. Then the next few examples that I'll show you will be by using the test object details section from within the object properties window. I'll now flip over to QTP to show you examples of these. Now the first thing we need to do is to open the object repository window. And for more information on how to open the object repository window, feel free to watch one of my other videos where I go into more information on that. So I will be opening the object repository window by using the menu bar. So I'll look near the top of the window and locate the resources button on the menu bar. Once I find it, I'll click it. I'll then locate the object repository button. Once I find it, I'll then click it. I'll then see the object repository window. The first couple of examples that I'll show you will be by using the update from application functionality. Now before we begin the click sequences that we'll need to take to actually make these updates, we need to tell QTP which object it is that we're actually looking to update. We can do this by looking on the left hand side of the window in the white space that I'm circling. Within that we need to locate the top section which is entitled test objects. Now the items that are listed in this section are the objects that have been added to the object repository. In this example, I'm going to be making an update to the agent name edit box. So for me to be able to do this, I need to click to select the agent name object to tell QTP that that's the object that I'm looking to update. So once I find it, I'll click to select it as I've just done. There are two ways from within the object repository window to access the update from application functionality. The first way to access that is by using the menu bar. So look near the top of the window to find the menu bar, then locate the object button on the menu bar. 
Once you find it, click it. Then locate the Update from Application button. Once you find it, click it. You'll notice that once I click the Update from Application button, QTP has minimized and I'm now being shown the desktop. Now I have already opened up the Windows Sample Flight application and had it open on the background. You might have to either open your application or maneuver some windows around so that your application window is open before you actually click the update from application button. So you might have to click through a few different times to get the windows active that you need to be. However, once you've actually gotten your window active, now all you need to do is hover your mouse over the object that you're actually looking to update. In this example, I'm looking to update the object property values for the agent name edit box. So I'll hover my mouse over the edit box and then click on it. Once I click on it, QTP will then reappear and will be presented with the object selection window. Now you'll notice by default, QTP will automatically have clicked to select the when edit agent name edit box. Now it does that because we had clicked the agent name edit box object before we had even clicked the update from application button. So there's nothing else on this window that we need to do other than click the OK button in the bottom right corner of the window. Now at this point what would have happened is QTP would have went out and relearned the property values for that specific object and then updated those property values here in the value column on the specific row that that property would have pertained to. And that is here in the test object details section. Now the second way that we can access the update from application functionality is by clicking on the button bar. So look near the top of the window. Along the button bar, notice the button that looks like a brown box with a green circular arrow on it. Once you find it, you can click it. And once you click it, you'll notice that again, QTP will be minimized and you'll again see your application. So you could go through the same steps again. Uh, again, I could hover my mouse over the agent name edit box. Once I'm there, click. QTP will then reappear, and again we can follow the same steps by just clicking the OK button again, and then the object's property values would again be updated. The next set of examples that I'll show you will be by updating the object's properties and property values within the Test Object Details section of the Object Repository window. The first example I'll show you is to edit an existing property value. So we first need to locate the property that we're actually looking to update. To begin, locate the Description Properties section. Then within that, find the property that you're looking to update. So let's say I wanted to update the Attached Text property value. I can first locate the Attached Text row and then look under the Value column for that specific row. Then click your mouse in that value, you'll notice that once I did that, the text changes and QTP automatically selected all of the text in that specific value for that particular row. Now all I need to do is go in and manually manipulate the value to whatever I would like it to be. So let's say instead of agent name, I wanted it to read as agent names. All I need to do is type an S. Now to lock in your changes, all you need to do is click off of that specific property. So I'll just click on the row above it. Now let's say I wanted to go back and undo that change that I just made. All I need to do is then click back in the value column for that specific row, which again is the attached text row. Click back in and then just delete off the S. And then again click back off of that row to lock that change back in. The next example I'll show you is where we can actually go in and add a new property and value onto what QTP has already created for us. So in this example, QTP automatically learned this object by referencing the native class and attached text properties. But let's say we uh, wanted to add a different property value that had not already been learned. 
What you can do is look just to the top of the test object details section and you'll see a few buttons. Locate the button that looks like a green plus sign. Once you find it, click it. You'll then be presented with the Add Properties window. Now you can scroll up and down through this list and these are the additional properties that QTP used to learn about the object but it's not actually using those values to identify it at runtime. So you can click to select any of these properties that you would like. Let's just say I wanted to add the focused property into how QTP goes about recognizing the object. All you need to do is click on the focused row then click the OK button. Once I've done that, you'll notice that the focused property with its value of false have now been added into the description property section. So now instead of only referencing the native class and attached text properties to recognize that object, it will now also look to the focused property. The next example I'll show you is how to delete an existing property and its associated value. So again, Look up near the top of the Test Object Details section where you'll find a few buttons and locate the button that looks like a red X. Now, before you click this, you're going to want to click to select the property and its value that you're looking to delete. So since I had just added the focused property, I'll just click back again on that to actually go in and delete it. So once you've clicked to select the property that you're looking to delete, Again, locate the red X button, and then click it. You'll notice that once I click that, the property has now been removed. And we're back to just the two original properties that QTP had used to learn from the object. The next example I'll show you is to restore the mandatory property set. Let's say that you had been working in QTP, and in addition to the initial properties that QTP had used to recognize an object, in our example, those two initial properties would have been native class and attached text. Let's say that you had added an additional property. So I'll click to add the Y property. Let's say you had added one or two or even more properties to go about actually recognizing that object. But now you want to go back and clean this object up and you want to take it back to what QTP originally had used to recognize the object. What you need to do is look near the top of the Test Object Details section where you'll see a few different buttons. Locate the button that looks like a circular arrow. Once you find it, click it. You'll then be presented with a warning box. And at the bottom of the warning box it will ask you, are you sure you want to restore the mandatory property set? All you need to do is click the Yes button in the bottom right corner of the window You'll notice that once I click that, the properties have now been updated, and instead of attached text, native class, and the Y property, we're now left back with attached text and native class, as these were the two original properties that QTP had used to recognize the object. For the next set of examples that I'll be showing you, we do not need to use the object repository window, so I'll go ahead and click to close this. The next set of examples that I'll be showing you will be using the Object Properties window. To access the Object Properties window, we need to first locate an object that we would like to actually modify. So let's look at line 5 on my script. And as you can see on line 5, we're making references to two different objects. The first object is the Dialog window. The next object is a Win Edit. And this when edit, as you'll see in quotes, is agent name. This is the same object that we've been referencing in the previous examples. So let's go ahead and we'll just uh, reference this object again as well. Now to open the object properties window, what you need to do is position your mouse cursor over the phrase that is between the quotes of the object that you're looking to modify. So in this example, I'm placing my mouse cursor over the agent name phrase. Once I'm there, right click. And in the sub menu that will pop up after doing that, locate the object properties button. Once you find it, click it. You'll then be presented with the object properties window. 
This window should look very familiar to you, specifically the main part of the window. As you'll see, this is the test object details table, and this is almost the exact same table that we were looking at in the previous set of examples when we were looking at the test object details section of the object repository window. So a lot of the same functionality that you had in that table, you'll also have in this table. For example, uh, if we would like to manually edit a property value, again as before, all you would need to do is click inside of the value and then modify it in whatever way you would like. As before, again, if you would like to add a property and a value, you can look near the top of the section to find the button that has a green plus sign. You could click it and again click a property that you would like to add, then click the OK button. And then you'll see that that new property has been added. Now if you would like to delete a property, all you would need to do again as before is click to select the property, then locate the button near the top right corner of the window that looks like a red X. You could then click that button. You would notice that that property has now been deleted. Now I move quickly through these examples because this is basically the same functionality that we had went over in the previous set of examples. Now we no longer need this window so I'm going to click to close the object properties window. This now concludes the video where we've covered the following three topics. First, what does it mean to update an object in the object repository? Second, why would you need to update an object in the object repository? And third, what are some of the most common ways to update the object repository? As a reminder, to stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button. Thank you, and I hope that you have a great day.